I want to talk about can I bus? Let's get into it. Alright man, Torture Talk, like, share, subscribe to the page. Today I want to talk about cannabis and his influence on hip hop music and where I think that he kind of fell from grace. Before that, like, share, subscribe to the page. Uh, if you want to donate to the Cash App, it's in the description uh, in PayPal, whatever. If not, best way to support the channel is to like, share, subscribe. You know, share this video, hit the bell, and to be notified, you know. So let's get into this, man. Cannabis. 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 Alright, so Cannabis is a 90s rapper who I think was destined to be the greatest rapper of all time. And how he fell from grace so hard that it really changed hip-hop in a way. So Cannabis was one of those rappers that he was a very heavy punchline rapper, metaphor assembly rapper, but he did it in a way where it was unbelievably good to the point it was like, how the hell did he come up with that? He was so advanced when it came to that stuff back then to people. He was like, it, he was like, he wasn't mortal. When it came to that, people looked at him like, this is an alien, for real. He's an alien. He had, he had books of raps. Just books and books and books and books of raps. And I think that he became to the, he got to this point where he was such a good lyricist that people got annoyed with him after a while because he was too complicated to understand. Now, is that his fault or is that people's fault? I would say mostly it's his fault because when you feed people something and they start to, uh, you know, get used to that, you got to gradually up the level. I think he jumped a level so fast and so high that people couldn't keep up with him. And on top of that, he was in the, he, he he moved into the age of from hardcore rap to actually to the snap and the snapping era and, and people just didn't really want to hear that type of music anymore. So he kind of moved into that era where he was still spitting that, but people really wasn't trying to hear it. Like people was like, well, we don't really care for your your uh your uh, uh super lyrical ability. Can you make us snap and dance? Can you make us lean and rock with it? And he couldn't keep up with that. So he just kept doing what he was doing. And here's why I say he fell from grace. See, Cannabis to me was probably the best lyricist of one of the best lyricists of all time. But see, the thing is, when it comes to lyrics, you, you have to be very balanced. And I had to detach myself from Cannabis because I really felt like Cannabis was that way and I always caped for cannabis. I always was like, oh nah, you just don't understand cannabis. You, you, it ain't his fault. You don't understand him. It ain't his fault. But then I realized that music changes. And if you don't change with it, or if you don't grow with it, or if you don't do your own type of thing where it changes, it morphs, and you still stuck in that era, you could be the greatest lyricist of all time. But if you don't have anything else, what happens to you? So there's a bunch of different rappers who were great lyricists, but they never really made it. Raskas is one of them. To me, Raskas just picked horrible beats, but he was a great lyricist. But what happened? These guys can't make songs. See, that's the thing. See, you can make a rap song, but you gotta know how to make something. The thing is, what people gotta understand about music is, even though you guys hate the fact that Biggie Smalls went commercial or, or Jay-Z went commercial, Eminem did these, these wild songs, even Nas did some things that were a little bit commercial, you have to reach a broader audience. 
You can't always stay where you're at because what happens is your fan base is going to stay there. But as they get older, they're not going to really want to hear that from you because their mind's starting to mature. So they're going to move up. And if you're still rapping that way, they're going to say, oh, this guy still raps like he rapped 10 years ago. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear something that's a little more, a little more modern. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, I'm not saying that cannabis can't do it. I'm saying that he just didn't do it. And that's the thing. So, again, you have to have that gift, I believe, to make songs that people can resonate with. If you're talking about scientific things that people are not into, then what happens? Nobody's going to listen to it. You, it can be a great rap, you know what I'm saying? But nobody's going to hear that. Or your, or 10 people out of 100 might like it. Or 1,000. Or, or, or 10,000 might like it. To me, that's not good enough. So, that's how he kind of fell from grace. Because I don't think that he understood that. Well, maybe he did. But maybe he just didn't want to compromise himself. Now, get into the beef with him and LL. Some people say he got blackballed. You know, cannabis was one of the first pioneers when it came down to uh, internet hip hop. It was cannabis, then Joe Buttons. So cannabis was one of the first pioneers. That's what people gotta people gotta respect him for that because when before the internet was really popping, cannabis was doing all that on the internet. So he's like he's seeing the future. But the thing was, if cannabis would have grew with the music and and maybe became a little more musical. And he could have still kind of did his own thing because you can trick people into liking you. Just got to be a little more musical. But it can't be like every time you're trying to rip the mic. You're going to rip the mic for the, for your fans because they live in that nostalgia. But then after that, what else? They're going to say, oh, well, ah, man, nobody want to hear that right now. Like, so when he, bat, when he, when he went against LL, LL kind of tarnished him. And I do say that Cannabis won that battle, but I would say oh, El Conda won the war. I would say Conda won the war. I'm not going to say he fully won, but I think that El, El Conda exposed him with that one line, even though it's a corny line. 99% of your fans don't exist. That's a corny line, but El, El won that because it's the perception that actually made El, El win that off of that one line. Now, Cannabis, to me, Second Round Knockout is one of the greatest diss songs of all time. But you got to understand, just because that it is what it is, doesn't mean anything when someone says something about you that everybody feels. So, LL, you battle LL. LL was a battle rapper, and he was, a, he was one of those rappers from that era. But LL got it. He was a lyricist, but he got it. He said, you know what? I can't just make raps like this. I have to make songs and raps for everybody and touch everybody. That's the thing. And I think that that's where cannabis went wrong. Because, again, I'm not saying that cannabis couldn't do it. And if I did, I apologize. I'm not saying that he couldn't do it. I'm saying that he didn't want to do it. So this is the consequences of it. And again, they say he got blackballed, so that could have played a major part into it. But but he went online, and if he would have stuck with it, now again, cannabis has a cult following; people still love him. But be, to be successful, you don't have to be a Jay Z. You can be successful with a hundred thousand people. So maybe he's comfortable in his space. But as to me, the reason why he fell from my top, my top ten, all the way down to about my top. 50 is because he never got it. You know what I'm saying? And I got it before he did. Because if I would have just st stuck with that same mind state, it would have been a bunch of people that I thought was just lyricists being in my top 10. Easily. But I started to think, I said, well, you have to have everything. It can't just be, oh yeah, you're a great rapper. No. You have, be, have, to, have, you have to have it all. So that's why I say cannabis fell from grace. But cannabis is a legend and he's one of those rappers I think that has un I would say the best some of the best verses ever created in hip hop I don't think that some of his verses are bulletproof I think that I don't care there are some verses that cannabis wrote back in 
96, 97, that no one today can stick, can overcome those verses. They're perfect. He got about 10 perfect verses. Perfect. To the point it was like, that's a 10, that's a 10, that's a 10, that's a 10, that's a 10. So, Cannabis Man, legendary rapper, fell from grace. We got to give him his flowers, though, because I think that he is the reason why a lot of people rap the way they rap with a lot of metaphors and similes, and it came back around. And I kind of wish that, I kind of wish that he kind of got it and, and, and kind of uh, wasn't so stubborn, you know, at one point. I believe he was kind of stubborn at one point. But going through his albums, he do have a couple of albums that I thought was all right. I actually went back and I listened to see True Hollywood Stories, and it's actually an okay album. I think that I didn't like it. And again, when we're talking about growth, I didn't like see True Hollywood Stories at that time because that was one of those albums that was like, okay, uh, this is not what we want to hear. Like, we want to hear you rap. So I think that at one point he kind of did try to grow, but then when he come out, he came out with the curriculum 101, he went back into it and ripped the jacker, went back into it. And again, if you're a cannabis fan, cannabis has a pretty good catalog. But if you are a rap fan and you listen to rap and you and you are a music fan, it becomes annoying sometimes. So, so cannabis is legend, needs his flowers. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna do more videos like this about people just singling them out and uh this is how cannabis fell from grace but he's still a legend torture talk like subscribe to the page you know what it is